Howdy ho there, friends and neighbors. Bobby here today. Hey folks, today we got a 2011 Nissan Murano and we're going to do a front brake job on it, okay? So stay tuned and we'll show you how we get this done. All right, guys, here's the parts and the tools that you will need, okay, to do this job. Now, let me talk about these parts right quick. Um, these are the Wherever Platinum Professional Series pads and rotors, okay? Uh, they're actually made by CarQuest, but actually I got these at Advanced Auto Parts. I believe Advanced Auto has bought out CarQuest, okay? I've used these pads for years and had really good luck with them. They're a very good pad. You get good life out of them. Plus, they, they don't make noise. Uh, they're probably one of the best aftermarket brake pads that there is out there. I strongly recommend these. I have these on my own personal vehicles. Now, they also have, and I don't know if this is something new they've done in the last year or so. I've actually purchased a, these a time or two. These are the Platinum Series rotors, which I recommend as well. Because here's the cool thing about them. The hubs already come powder coated. They're either painted or powder coated. I'm not real sure. And even the um, fins on them, on the edges, because a lot of times when you put a set of cheap rotors on your car, uh, within you know a few months they get all rusted, and then a lot of these new cars today have uh, wheels to where you can see through them really, really large openings, you know, between the spokes. And you can see all this rusted surface and it just looks terrible, you know. So these platinum rotors actually come painted, okay? And I believe they're painted on, well, they're at least painted on the on the front side and, of course, along the edge there. So I highly recommend these. These are good quality brake rotors. Now let's talk about some of the tools that you're going to need to do the job. Um, if you have an air compressor, you will be able to use some air tools. So you'll need an impact wrench and an air ratchet. If you don't have air tools, you'll have to use some sort of breaker bar uh, to take your, and a socket to take your uh, lug nuts off and hand wrenches and ratchets to take uh, the rest of the parts off. But with air tools, um, you'll be able, with an air compressor, you'll be able to use air tools. A 14 millimeter socket, I recommend a swivel, but it's not necessary. A 21 millimeter to pull the wheels off. You will need a 22 millimeter take the caliper bracket off and you'll need some type of large breaker bar to break that loose. To press the caliper back you will need either a C-clamp or a large set of channel locks or if you do have a caliper tool for pushing them back that's even better. But that's what we're going to be using today. Also a torque stick to tighten your lug nuts back down and or a torque wrench. Okay so guys let's get started on this and we'll show you how we get it done. A word of precaution for, for you guys, um, properly lift the vehicle and support it with jack stands. Notice I have a jack stand on the frame rail on this side and there's one on the other side as well. Okay guys, I'm going to show you how to do this right side on this car and then after that you should be able to do the left side yourself. So what we're going to do, take a 14 millimeter socket on our two caliper bolts here and we're going to go ahead and back these out. With those two caliper bolts removed, you can go ahead and pull your caliper up. Now what you can do, a lot of times, if you have your five gallon bucket close at hand when you're doing a brake job down here on jack stands, you can just sit your caliper right on that. Or actually these little things here work good. I picked these up at uh, Home Depot. It's like a, a wire with some rubber wrapped around it. They're for uh, holding up drop cords and stuff. See how they kind of stay in one position. You can take this, loop it through the caliper if you like and just kind of bend it around and then you can come up here to your strut spring, spring on your strut and you can just kind of hold it up here out of the way to where you don't put a whole lot of tension on your brake hose. Okay, next we're gonna go and take these uh, caliper bracket bolts out and they, uh, the size on the heads of those is a 22 millimeter and they'll be pretty tight. So if you can't get an impact in there, you'll need a long breaker bar as you can see. That is pretty tight. We'll go ahead and break both of these loose. And then we'll zip them out with the air ratchet. Now with our 3-8 drive air ratchet and our 22 millimeter adapted on here with an adapter, we'll go ahead and zip these out. Now guys, since this is a floating rotor, typically the only thing holding it on is just a little bit of rust. You can take a hammer and just smack the rotor a little bit and you can go ahead and remove it because we are replacing these. 
Okay, we're gonna take our caliper bracket over to the cart and we're gonna go ahead and put our new pads and new hardware in place. Okay, over here on the cart, we're gonna go ahead and rebuild this, get the new pads loaded in, ready to go. We're gonna lay our old pads aside there for a minute and we're gonna take these spring clips out, the old ones, because we did get new ones to go in here. And you just go ahead and pull those out of the way. And then what we're gonna do is take our wire brush and we wanna make sure there's no crud or anything behind these spring brackets, okay? So we're gonna take our wire brush and we're just gonna go ahead and clean this surface really good. Blow it off a little bit. We'll do this side as well. And now we're pretty good with that. Now we'll take our new clips here and we'll go ahead and put them into place. Now some cars will have different clips for either side. I've already checked these, these are identical. So you don't have to worry about getting one clip on one side, one clip on the other side. And they just simply snap right into place, just like so. And now let's move on to lubricating our pins, okay? Now don't get these pins uh, mixed up because I will show you why. One of them will probably have a rubber uh, thing around the end of it, and that one does. And the other one won't, will not. So I just recommend always putting things back where you got it from. So we're gonna pull, we're gonna wipe all the old grease off of there. We're gonna wipe the grease off of this one. That old thick grease. And then we're going to take some 3M brand silicone paste, okay? I like this better than just about anything for lubing uh, caliper pins. It seems to work the best. And I think most of your Asian car manufacturers use something of this nature from the factory. So we're gonna go ahead and lube this up really good, okay? Shove it in the hole and kind of twist it to work that lubricant all the way around really good. And then go ahead and pop it back in place. And we still have enough on our finger here probably to do this pin as well. So we're gonna lube that up good. Get just a little bit more. Lube that up real good. Twist it real good. Rotate that stuff in that bore. And there you go. Now with your set of brake pads, you'll get some organic grease that comes with it, okay? I like to use this on the uh, these little um, Oh God, I can't think of the name of it. These little things right here, the little things I just installed. These little shims. I like to dab just a little bit uh, on here, just so the pad has a little bit of lubricant on there. You don't want to put a whole lot on here because you don't want to end up, it end up slinging on the rotor and getting in between the pad and the rotor. You just want a light lubricant on there. Just to help things slide a little easier. Good there. Now next we're going to go ahead and install our brake pads. So we're looking at our old inner pad here. We can tell it's the inner one because it's got where the caliper marked it and the clips on this side. So this pad right here has the clip on this side and this will be our inner pad. So I'm going to go ahead and put the inner pad in place in the caliper bracket. There we go. Our inner pad is actually in place now and we know this other pad here. We can match it up and tell that this is our outer pad. So we will go ahead and slide it in place as well. And I think this hopefully will go a little easier. There we go. I think. There we go. Okay, so now our pads are actually in the uh, caliper bracket. And we're ready to take it back over to the car and put it on after we get our rotor in place. Okay, with a new rotor, you want to take some brake cleaner or some lacquer thinner or something. I got some lacquer thinner here on a paper towel. And we want to go ahead and wipe down the cosmoline that may be on this rotor, okay? It'll have an oily film from the factory just to keep it from rusting. And from this point, all you really have to do is slide your new rotor in place. like so and what I like to do guys is uh, a little pair of needle nose pliers here okay when I'm dealing with a floating rotor I'm gonna push it up there nice and straight 
and take your uh, needle nose pliers and just grab a hold of one of the studs there and that will help hold your rotor in place while you're putting your caliper back on. Okay, we're ready to install our loaded caliper bracket here. I'm gonna grab one of our 22 headed millimeter headed bolts here and go ahead and start that by hand. We'll grab our other one, make sure your washer's in place. I have seen before where someone has left a washer off a bolt and that bolt will gouge into the rotor, okay? Make sure you don't lose any of your hardware. Okay, from this point here, we will go ahead and tighten up these two bolts. Okay guys, with our breaker bar, we will go ahead and torque these things down. Now I know about what it's supposed to feel like because I've been doing this for over 30 years. But if you're unsure, you can look up the torque spec and torque these with a torque wrench, okay? It's probably about 110 pounds of torque. Okay, at this point, I want to go ahead and put a little bit of lubricant on the back of the pads just to get, just to minimize any, any little squeaks or anything. I like to use anti-seize. This comes in uh, silver like this, just regular old Permatex anti-seize or when I worked at, uh, I think the Acura dealership, we had some gold looking stuff or the Nissan dealership. It's basically all the same. You just want to take this anti-seize, put you a thin coat on the outside of the pad, just so it has something to kind of, that caliper to kind of ride on there and on the inside as well, where that piston touches it, okay? Just a thin layer of anti-seize. Okay, now it's time to squeeze back the caliper. You can take one of your old brake pads and a pair of channel locks and just squeeze this caliper back. Now, remember I showed you earlier that you could use a C-clamp. If you're not strong enough to uh, squeeze the piston back, a uh, C-clamp might be a little easier for you. But for me, a uh, pair of channel locks works just fine. Okay, now from this point here, piston squeeze back. We're gonna go ahead and set it on here. Now pay careful attention not to twist your line. You do not want to put a full round of twist on this line or you will have issues with your brake line real quick. So we wanna do that and slide it into place. And then we will take our 14 millimeter headed bolts here and start them by hand. There's the upper one, here's the lower one, and then we'll tighten them up. Alright, next I'll just take my 14 millimeter open-ended wrench, and uh, I'm sorry, box-end wrench, and just check the tightness of these two bolts. Once again, if you're not comfortable, with how things are supposed to be tightened, please uh, get your torque wrench, figure out the spec, and tighten it down. On this size bolt here, probably around 18 to 20 pounds of torque would probably be about the specification. Okay guys, that just about does it for the right side on here. And as far as the left side, you would actually do the same procedure on it, and then you'll have your brake job completed. Now, folks, uh, after you would get done with this, you would make sure you put your tires back on your car, torque the lug nuts down properly, and pump the pedal up before you drive this car out of the shop, okay? Pump the pedal until you get a nice hard pedal, and then double check your brake fluid level in your master cylinder, okay? And then you should be good to go. And then take it on a nice test drive, make sure you don't hear any noises or anything like that, and you should be good to go. I want to thank you for watching the video today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And also, guys, I have a new book out on fitness and weight loss. Uh, there will be a link down below if you want to check that out. It's for sale currently on Amazon. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time.